Okay, hey BookTube, how's it going? Um, today I'm going to be doing um, the recycling book tag that um, I guess David Wardrop did a while ago. And um, Mark at Richardson Reads just did it. And um, it looked like a fun one, so I thought I'd do it too. So, um, it's pretty. It's a pretty easy one. Um, going green. Name a book with green on the cover or in the title. Now, I just want everyone to know that, like, um, the majority of all my books are in storage right now. So all I have is this back here and a little bit down beneath. And then Zoe has her book cart um, overflowing right there. Um, but I tried to find... Um, just some like paperbacks, like little paperbacks for it. Um, with the whole like recycling thing, I felt like these should be older books or um, things like that. So anyway, <clears throat> so for green, name of a book with green on the cover of the title. This is the greenest book I have. It's um, Star Trek Log 10 by Alan Dean Foster. Um, it's adapted from the animated series created by Gene Roddenberry. Um, I think I like these covers the best. They just look so silly and fun. Um, I haven't read this one yet. Um, I'm on... I finished four. So um, I have a ways to get to this, but this is Del Rey... Um, uh, is it going to tell me a year on this bad boy? First edition, January 1978. Um, so this book is older than me. Let's see. Um, what stories do we have in here? Um, Slaver Weapon. Um, Star Trek Log 10. Green. Let's see what's next here. Um, Reduce. A thin or small book that you own. Um, this is the thinnest and smallest book that I have here. It is How to Prevent Monster Attacks, written and illustrated by Dave Ross. Are Frankenstein, Godzilla, and the Mummy out to get you? You will find out in this book. Now, um, this is a minstrel book from Simon and Schuster um, from 1986. Now, 1986 was a big year. Oh, wait, no, this is from um, originally from 1984. Um, and then the first menstrual book printing was um, July 86. But then the special printing was August 86. So I have no idea um, what's going on here, but this is some of the artwork. Now, this book is special to me for a couple different reasons. Um, I actually have more than one copy of this. Um, 86 was a good year, guys, for those of you who don't remember it. Um, there was a movie that came out um, called The Monster Squad in 86. And that movie had a very big effect on me. Um, it... Basically, it was basically the Goonies with monsters, and it made me almost 100% believe that there were monsters and ghosts. And I mean, between Ghostbusters, the Goonies, and Monster Squad, um, like my brain was mush, and I really thought that these things could happen. So I started, um, a club, I think it was third grade, called um, the Monster Killers Club, or the MKC for short, and I was the president, um, I had a business card, that was another funny thing, we made our own business cards, but it was like four of us, and like, we only had one business card each, so it was like, I was the president, um, Joe was the vice president, Paul was the treasurer, and um, Tony, what was Tony? He was the one who drew all the monsters because he was the best artist. I can't remember, maybe the secretary. But So we all had our business cards, but we only made one copy. So we each had our own business card. I don't know, 
I was in third grade. But anyway, that inspired me because I found the business card like 20 years later. And um, I did a web series on one of my other channels way back when about like what if there was this 30-year-old guy who was the last member of his monster hunting club. Um, and that was so much fun. Like, if you ever wanted to watch me with a smaller beard um, do a bad British accent um, on a show that looks like Cops or something like that, um, I'll see if I could find it. Um, and just like put like the intro or a trailer up because it was, it was so much fun. It was like really good times, but this book inspired all of that. Um, I carried this book with me everywhere I went. Um, I don't know if this was the copy or the other copy I have, but, um, yeah, this was just a lot of fun. So there you go. Um, there's like seven episodes and they're like five minutes long or something like that. Um, that was a fun little trip. I liked that. Okay. Reuse. A book you have that is well worn. Um, I don't... This There's probably more up there, but this one's pretty beat. This is... Um, Two novels by Day Keen, who has Wilma Lathrop and Murder on the Side. Really cool cover artwork, like photo artwork. Um, let me see. This is a two-for-one Lancer book. This was given to Ruby in January of 65 as the inscription says and this was okay those were copy written in 55 and 56 and it just goes so i don't know exactly when the when the date is for this um but i mean it's got tape on the spine on the top and the back and i want to read it so bad um but the pages are like like you could like pull chunks of pages out and so oh gosh that really smells like an old book um two complete novels for only 50 cents how can you go wrong um i've read a lot of day Keen short stories and a couple of his novels and i really like his style um but i just every time i like get into this to start reading it I feel like I can't open it all the way and the print's so small that like I'm like this and that's another thing that's weird because of um, me aging and getting older um, it's harder and harder to read small print and I love these books so much and like I've been like collecting them as much as I can but like when I open them up Especially, like, those fossil gold medals, man. It's, like, like it's ridiculous. It just hurts. Okay, so what's next? Um, recycle. A book you have reread or most handled. Now, this is kind of a cheat. Because the books behind me there, I have not really reread. Some of them I haven't even read. Like, hang on. These. And... Most of these and those, like down in here, I haven't read. And that's why I brought them out here with me, so I could read them while I'm out here. Um, but, <clears throat> so this is a cheat, because this is a very nice copy of this book. This is Breakfast of Champions by Kurt Vonnegut, and I just reread it, um, like, over the weekend, I guess. Um, this is one of my favorite books ever, um, 
and this copy of it I got because the other two copies of this book I have. I've read so many times that the pages are coming out. And um, one of them, like the cover is like, like it got soaking wet. Um, I don't remember how, like I spilt something on it or something. But the pages are just like yellow and like coming out. Um, so whenever they come out with a new edition of this, I usually pick it up. Although these editions, although this is the worst cover of all of them, the ones with Vonnegut's drawings and then they do the titles. I'm trying to get all of his books um, that were released like that. I just think they're gorgeous and really fun. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> so out of all the books I have, um, the ones that I've read the most and that look the worst, it's Breakfast of Champions. Because not only have I read that book a ton and, um, like, taken it everywhere. Like, you know, like, back in the 90s, like, all the hip actresses and actors were, like, going everywhere with, like, a copy of Catcher in the, Catcher in the Rye in their purse, like... Breakfast of Champions was my catcher in the rye for some stupid reason. Um, but uh, I used to lend it out to people all the time. And, um, like, for a long time, back when messenger bags were cool, I know Steve Donahue thinks they still are. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Steve. Um, messenger bags are cool. But anyway, <clears throat> um, when I had... A messenger bag and I carry with me everywhere. I usually had two copies of that in there. One for me to read and then one for me to lend out if I ran into anybody who wanted to read it. So, um, but yeah, so all my crap copies of that are in storage because I'm not going to read them anymore because I got a better copy of it. So that, that was my cheat. Um, don't throw away what is the oldest book or a book you refuse to part with. So the oldest book that I have here, that's how I'm doing this, is a popular library um, copy of The Golden Box by Francis Crane. Um, now this, this is a Pat Abbott mystery. I've never read it. I've had this book for so long. Oh, maybe I started reading it. A bookmark just fell out of it. <laughs> Um, oh my god, I had a dream last night that they told me the Iliad closed, and I got really scared. So, if I'm, like, foreseeing that, someone let me know that that's not true. One of the reasons why I love this book, um, I like the size of it. It's just a, it's a nice, feel-good size. But the cover is, like, this really thick um, cardstock. It's, it's just so nice. Oh, it's great. Um... But yeah, the print in here is like, good luck. It's like the fine print in a lawyer's contract. Um, but yeah, man, like this is just, it's, how many pages is this? 218. Anyway, so this is um, 1942, um, popular library edition. So this is the oldest uh, book I have here in the RV. Um so that's that. Um, so these are my recycled book tags. Um, Star Trek Log 10, How to Prevent Monster Attacks, Two by Day Keen, Breakfast of Champions, and The Golden Box. For tagging this, um, I don't like apparently this is an old tag. Um, and I'm just getting I'm just getting back in. So if you haven't done it, please um, do it. This was fun. So um, take care everybody.